Hey everybody, since we have such a lovely day here in the Netherlands, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for me to explain to you how I do my uh, traditional sketch cleanups in Photoshop. So, let's jump into it. First, I need to take a picture of this. For that, I like to go to the lightest area of the house, which in this case is that spot right we need nice and natural uh, light. If you want to have a good picture that's easy to clean up, you really need a uh, middle of day light. Perfectly would be if you have sunshine like this. So now I'm going to take pictures of this. For comparison's sake, I came back to my room and I'm gonna take a couple of pictures here as well. And I'm also gonna turn on the light. So we have sort of a night later um, environment to see how different it is to clean up something like that compared to what I did in the light environment. All right, so now we are in Photoshop. I have three pictures. One is the one that I took at a nice and bright spot in the house. The other one, I just took it here at my desk in my room. And then there we have uh, one that I took uh, with my night light on, so you can see how I work at night conditions. First, I'm going to do the one that I did in a living room that is quite nice and bright. First thing that I always do is curves. And curves you can find in images adjustment sorry image adjustment and then curves there's also Control m or command m on mac and usually i put a dot on this line wherever this graph is the highest so in this case the dot comes here and then i push it a little bit on the brightness and i pull it down a little bit in the darkness and let's see what the difference is so as you can see the lines are quite nice and sharp the only different, the only thing that I would like to say is before you do this, always make a copy of the layer and just paste it above it and work on that. All right. So let me go back here before I did all the adjustments. I'll make a copy of the layer, paste it above. And now I bring in my curves with control M. I put this little dot, give it some extra brightness, pull it down a little bit here. There we go. Once again, see how the lines became nice and crisp. Okay, sorry about that. And now what I'm going to do is put a mask on this and everything that is not my drawing, I'm just going to paint over it. So because I don't want everything else to be much stronger, I don't want the contrast there. I just want the contrast on my drawing. And from now on, what I do is I'm going to con control A or command A, which selects the whole uh, image. I'm going to do a control shift C or command shift C. That basically everything that's visible here, it c uh, copies. So not just one layer. It doesn't just copy something that's on the layer, but it copies everything. And I'm pasting it back on top of it. And here I'll do the a control M again. So back to the curves. And I'm going to take the white spot, I, uh, or white point sample tool, eye picker tool. And I'm going to pick in here. There we go. And look at that difference. It's just night and day. Immediately better. And you can actually repeat this process a couple of times because we still have, if I zoom in, we have some darker spots here. The thing is, I don't want the image to be blown out. So we can repeat this process over and over again. But because of this grayness here, let me show you, it's going to get blown out again. I'm going to select this grayer area. And you can find gray spots like this one. And then you zoom out and give it an OK. And while the white paper became a lot nicer and whiter, the drawing got blown out. So we can do this. But before we do this, we do the same process again. We select everything that's visible, paste it on the layer above it. And then this is where we're going to go to our curves again. Take the white picker and take a brown or gray spot, give it an OK. And now while this is blown out, it's not a problem because we're going to bring the opacity well, a little bit down, as you can see. And what you can also do is add a mask on top of it and just mask it a little bit away where you have lines. So let's see if, so if you want to have some of these nice uh, line touches, for example, here, you want to have some of these edges. So just mask it back a little bit. 
here and let's just ask, add a little bit of mask and that's barely going to be visible, but it still adds something. So this is how fast you can clean up your lines if you're doing it with correct lighting. And maybe one more thing I can show you is if you duplicate this again, so you can do it by Control C and Control V for the layer or just drag it over the new layer. And then what you do is you put it to multiply and the opacity. So you put it to multiply and you bring down the opacity a little bit and the lines will become sharper. And once again, using the nice masking, I'm just going to go to the mask and everything that's on the outside is too sharp now. I'm just gonna mask it away a little bit. There we go. And then when we have all of these layers, I'm just going to make a copy of them. Well, actually, before I do that, I put them, I make the background layer a normal layer and I put them all into one folder and I duplicate the folder because I like to work non-destructively and then I simply merge it and then we put the folder onto multiply and now that we have our multiply folder below it we create a new layer and with the lasso tool we just start selecting and I'm going to do a very rough job here because I don't want to color this now but we can like this we can start giving it a little bit of shape and fade and color and whatever we would like to do okay. I, did the, the, I should not stop doing this but as soon as i start <laughs> rendering something it's just so much fun anyways i'm not going to continue on this one let's switch to our next this one so this seems a little bit already. also the desk that I'm using is not the nicest one. It's quite old, but we're going to use the same methodology. So control M for curves. I set it here and then I just push the darks down and push the whites up a little bit. And once again, look at how nice and sharp that white, the, the lines became at the same time. You can see on the white of the paper that it's now super uneven and make a copy of this control M. And I'm going to look for the grace in the paper. Let's take this one, zoom out. And I'll give it an OK. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, I didn't lose that much. I think it's still OK. What would be nice is to clean up a couple of these um, uglier uh, bends in the paper. So I copy it again, zoom in a little bit, Control M, white picker, uh, do that. There we go. Everything is super white. The only thing I'm going to do now is mask it. And let's see, I'm going to mask out where it blows out the black a little bit too much for my taste. Okay, here, you can undo if you see that. For example, here I went over it not so nicely. There we go. I just want some of these darks back. Let's see what the difference is. Also, I don't like, ah, no, that actually works. But it, it changed the color. So when it changes the color like this, then I'm going to go into adjustment layers, uh, hue saturation, actually not hue saturation, sorry. I'm going to adjustment layer, color balance. And before we hit a little bit more purple, I feel like. So I put a little bit magenta in there and a little bit blue. Yeah, we got that a little bit back. Then it's also up to you if you like the yellowish a little bit more. Maybe, maybe it is more, better. I don't know. Anyways, that's this not of importance. It's the same thing. I select the whole page again, then Control Shift C to copy everything. Control V, paste it back. There we go. And now uh, I'm going to Control M and take this here with a white picker there everything is going to be blown out and ugly now it doesn't matter because I put a mask on it and I go with a gradient tool and I nicely gradient everything back in again now I switch to my brush and I gradient this part back in again and see how nicely it took that out so now 
command A, control shift C and control V again. And I'm going to make this a multiply layer, turn down the opacity quite a bit. So we have those nice and sharp lines back and I am going to mask out again everything that doesn't need sharpening like the edges around here as you can see there we go and I still see so I, I went back this you can also do manually if you want to with a little bit of a white brush just paint in there and go over with a brush so don't be afraid to sometimes go in with a brush a little bit just make sure to not leave traces so sometimes zoom in and really go up to the line but this is just going to take a little bit longer and see this is this is what happens you have a much more decoloring here you have different sort of colors in this image that are just happening now I'm, what i'm going to do is try and copy paste it again so i have a new version of it Control M and I'm going to try to take these out. Okay, let's see how it looks now. I think it's better. I think it's definitely better. I'm going to try and multiply it again. Let's see because I feel the lines could just be a little bit sharper, a little bit more sharp. Not too sharp. So it always is a little bit fiddle work, but don't worry about it. That comes with the territory. And let's see if the edges needs to be taken away or not. Let's see. Um, yeah, I find it works better if they're a little bit bright like that. And then the same thing as before. Also, don't forget to adjust it. If you want it for Instagram, you can put it into a nice square and crop it down. And then there will be your visual again same as before you can just leave the background layer even if you want to make a group copy the group merge it down you can shut the group make a new layer before below the new merged image put that one to multiply just like this and then the same take the lasso tool and start selecting the drawing and then you get the super nice crispiness of the actual pen and paper sketch with really nice and sharp let's see if you want some sort of bluish gradient there then you can do that and then you can have these what i what i like to call the fake reflections there we go just cut out one line there and then Control H to hide the selection and then with white you can go back a little bit and you already have a shine. It's, it, it, it's this fast and you can also do the opposite if you want a little bit of, let's say, extra darkness to this. Let's give it a darker blue. Let's go darker. Make the brush a little bit smaller. Brush in there. There you go. Then let's add just two lines of darkness maybe it is reflecting something here and i'm going to take away saturation but give more darkness to it uh, maybe add a little bit of saturation back and more darkness there you go i like that more so that's that's how easy you can do this so now we have the first one with that the second one i personally just love the background also with a with a let me crop this also down so i go to my key tool then crop tool and this would be a nice centered image for Instagram and then the last one so here is where we will have the most trouble I am doing the same control M let's see if auto does anything for us here I'll click auto okay actually it does at the same time it blows away quite a bit of information for us there so instead let me try with my i would say this is the highest point so i'm going to put a point here pull it down a little bit here and push it up a little bit there okay so now this is already nice and white so now i'm going to copy this as always Control m to bring up the curves white picker there we go and 
Yes, we have a nice and white here. And here, if you take pictures, you can see you, we have a nice circle here. Let me also just draw this out for you guys with red. So this is white and then as we go on oh, new layer, we have a white here and as we go away from it, it becomes darker and darker as we move away from it. So what I'm going to do, copy this, paste it back and I'm going to select the next white. So I'm not going all the way to the darkest one because then it's going to blow everything out. But instead, I'm going just a little bit here. As you can see, I give it an OK. And now all the masking is happening. So I'm going to mask all the parts that are blown out. So this one was already quite nice and white. We don't need, we don't need it to be that super white. Let's see. Anything else that's blown out? A little bit there maybe. All right, let's copy everything again. Paste next level of white. So I'm going one step further. I'm going here. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, even more blown out. Mask again. Same procedure. Mask where it shouldn't be blown out. And then the rest can stay. Yeah, okay. I will add this back again and I will call this the final one. I'm going to pack it up. I'm going to copy it and maybe let's see the multiply now. Yeah, there we go. Now the multiply also semi works. There we go. So this is how annoying it is to clean up a not nice picture. So make sure to always have a nice and crispy and natural lit picture because your work is going to be so much easier. All right, that was it for this week's video. I hope you found it useful and that you took something away from it. If you did and if you liked it, please consider leaving a like and maybe also consider subscribing. If you didn't like it, please leave me a comment. I would like to make these videos better. So usually every constructive comment helps. But yeah, if you would like to see more content like this, as I said, subscribe, but also consider subscribing on my Instagram. I upload uh, quite often there every week. And uh, yeah, that was it for this week. See you folks next time. Bye-bye.